Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. One of them is a two year old toddler and the other is a two month old baby. In the past, I've shared my daughter's Montessori playroom tours with you guys. I think I did one back when she was seven months old, again when she was 11 months old, and another when she was 16 months old. I will go ahead and put links to those videos below for you guys in case you're interested in watching them. So my daughter actually turned two years old right around the same week that the baby was born. She has grown up a lot over the last couple of months. So obviously the activities and books and all the things that are in her playroom have changed as well to help meet her developmental needs. I'm a lifelong learner myself, so I'm constantly wanting to go out and learn more about Montessori every chance that I can get. And one of the biggest helps that I've had most recently, especially with my daughter now being a full-fledged toddler, is this book, The Montessori Toddler by Simone Davis. Now, I did mention this book in my five great books for parents video. There are just so many ideas in there for things that toddlers can do from ages one to three. And I am so excited to start trying out some of these newer activities that I haven't yet seen. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm gonna to share with you my toddler's playroom and hopefully give you some really good ideas for activities and ways that you might wanna set up your toddler's playroom too. So first I just wanna give you guys like a quick overview of what the whole space looks like that she's playing in. And then I'll go into details on all the different little sections that are in here in just a moment. It does kind of take a whole 360 sweep here because behind me, I also have her little art area and her place to use the potty. So this corner is actually her little play kitchen. Now she does have actual practical life materials that she can work with to help me cook in the kitchen, but we keep those in the kitchen. The items that she uses here are primarily for play. So she has like a little fake refrigerator that she keeps a little ice cube tray in. She has a refrigerator with all kinds of plush fruits and vegetables. I did cut down a little small sponge for her size to pretend with. Obviously you can see she's got some little pots and pans, a little plant. And then down here, there's some great little cubby space for her to store some of her little items that she likes to play with. So these are all like cooking materials, oven mitts, bowls, cups. And then there's another basket over here with some more pretend food in it. I know in Montessori, a pretend play kitchen is not like a typical part of a playroom, but this is a home environment, not a classroom, and my daughter really enjoys using this, so I love having it here for her. Now, the one thing that she does have over here that she does use for practical life skills is an actual little hand broom that I found at the grocery store, and she uses this all the time for sweeping up crumbs and little spills. She also got an actual child size broom for her birthday, and she keeps that right here in this corner, and she likes to use that as well from time to time. Now, backing out a little bit, you can see that I have a mirror installed on the wall right here, and that has been there since we started this whole Montessori journey when she was six months old. I do intend to leave that mirror there, because I now have another baby that's going to make use of it. And to be honest, I still see her watching herself in that mirror from time to time. So that's definitely there to stay. Now this is a toddler playroom update, but I do want to mention that I use this corner right here for the baby as well. I will actually put down her little play mat that she has. And I've been hard at work making all of the different Montessori mobiles for her. So I can actually take this off of the hook right here. It's really easy for the baby to lay right there and kind of play while my toddler works at her shelves and over here on the carpet with me. So this is kind of turning into a shared play space, but for now I'm just going over all of the toddler stuff that we have here in the playroom. And if you're interested in learning more about how to make some of these mobiles, if you have a baby too, I will go ahead and put links to those videos in the description box below. All right, now to move on to her shelves. Now you can see above her shelves, I have some artwork hanging at her level. I purposely did choose nature artwork and I chose a plant, an animal, a ladybug obviously, and a feather because I thought they were beautiful and simple and she really seems to enjoy them. I also keep a live plant here for her to help me take care of. This is a very low maintenance plant. It's called a golden pothos plant. You can see next to the plant, she's got a couple of little pine cones and this like cool little wooden thing. These are items that she found outside on some of our nature walks that she wanted to keep. As for her shelves, we use this simple eight cube shelf turned on its side from Ikea. I believe it's called the Ikea Calax shelf. I really like this shelf because it helps me to ensure that I'm keeping one activity in each of the cubbies at all times and not being tempted to overload it with different activities. It also kind of really helps me to make sure that I'm providing different types of activities. As you'll see in a minute, I have kind of like different categories set up in each of those little cubes. So it helps me to really rotate the different types of activities that are available to her as well. In this cubby, I have a fine motor hand-eye coordination activity for her. She's 
is very interested in lacing right now. It comes with two different colored shoelaces and she basically just works on putting the beads on the string. And being able to do that took her a little while at first, but she's really getting good at it now. So what I've done is tied one bead to the end. This way she can kind of string it on and make like a little necklace of sorts for herself without the beads falling off the other side. Once she gets really good at it, I'll probably take this bead off. But for now, this really seems to help prevent her from getting frustrated. In the cubby next door, I have a simple basket with some musical instruments. Right now she has a little music box. She can turn the little handle and she can actually see the little tines making the music. She also has this little wooden fish. I'm not even sure what this is to be totally honest, but this little drumstick comes out and you could bang on it and it makes a really pleasant noise that she really seems to like. She also likes putting the stick back in when she's done. So that's extra fine motor practice. I got her this little recorder for Easter. She loves this thing. A set of spoons that you can just bang. She really likes making loud noises with that. And a little shaker toy. In the next cubby, we have a Melissa and Doug set of vehicle puzzles. The puzzles that come with it are four different kinds. There's a school bus, a fire truck, a race car, and a train. When I actually first introduced this to her, I only put one of the puzzles out, but she got really good at doing them really quickly. So she constantly kept asking me for the other puzzles. So now all four of them are on her shelf and she kind of has a chance to choose which one she wants to work on. And to be honest, sometimes she'll try to do all four of them in one sitting. This is one of her favorite activities right now on the shelf. So I have a feeling this won't be out for a while. Also interesting to note that this is actually a 12 piece puzzle. I'm not sure at what age, to be totally honest, toddlers are supposed to be able to do a puzzle with that many pieces, but she took to it really quickly and she loves it. So jigsaw puzzles are another great fine motor hand-eye coordination activity for her. In the next cubby over here, this is kind of like her math cubby, I guess. She doesn't really do math per se yet, but we are working on some pre-math activities that will get her ready for that in the next year or two. So this activity is a sorting stacker. The idea is simply that you match up the colors to the correct peg and it also gives her the ability to count and practice her counting quantities. She is very interested in counting at the moment so this activity is perfect for her because it enables her to count one at a time. One, two, three yellow triangles. She's also very interested in shapes and she's also very interested in colors. So this activity is really hitting all of the spots that she seems to be in a sensitive period for right now. You'll notice that I don't have the activity set up like this on the shelf because it's basically already done for her. In Montessori, the idea is that you keep all the pieces in a basket. It's much more enticing for the child to want to come over and actually work on the activity if it's not yet already completed for them. So I do keep them all in this little basket basket next to it and she pulls both pieces off the shelves to work on it right here on the carpet. Okay, so moving to the bottom shelf, this basket is simply just a basket of balls. She is very into throwing and kicking balls right now. Some of these balls she's had, like this one, since she was a baby, but now they're kind of serving a different purpose for her and she's actually using them for what they're intended to be used for. So I keep this basket here and she goes to this basket almost every day and pulls out a different ball to play with. So this is kind of like her movement cubby, which is one of the types of activities that are great to provide for toddlers. The next this cubby over is more of an open-ended play activity cubby that I keep for her. Right now she has all of her baby dolls and her baby doll accessories. But she loves to role play now that she's a big sister. So even though this isn't technically like a Montessori category, I guess, it does invite her to use her imagination and creative play and practice things that she sees us doing with the baby around the house every single day. So I like to keep it out for that purpose. This cubby right here is kind of like her language cubby. As you can see, I've just repurposed one of the little Melissa and Doug trays from one of her puzzles. But what I've actually created is a DIY version of Color Box 2, which is a traditional Montessori activity. Basically, I just went to the store and picked up a bunch of these colored paint swatches. The idea is that you lay them all out in a row and the child is expected to match the different colors to each of the different colors that you've laid out. But because she is pretty good at it already, I started playing games with her where I'll actually fan out some of the cards and have her pick one 
sometimes if she doesn't know what color she's gonna pick that she has to match. Or sometimes I'll pull out a color card and ask her what color it is and then have her go get something that matches that color from somewhere else in the room. So we kind of play games with this in addition to the original intent of the activity. And in the last cubby right here, we just have a basket of magnetiles. They're just the little magnetic tiles that magnetize from every which direction that you put them together. She plays with this every single day, multiple times a day. It's really great for open-ended play, for fine motor practice, hand-eye coordination. She's getting an idea of geometry because she's building 2D and 3D shapes with these. She's also quickly mastering the names of all the shapes. Like she already knows square, but that's a pretty basic one. What I think is really cool is she's actually learning the difference between the different triangles. So she just calls this one a triangle, but she can actually tell me that this is a right triangle and she recognizes the difference between the two shapes. There are just so many benefits to an activity like this, even though this is not like a Montessori material per se, but I know that a lot of Montessori parents really enjoy having these around as well. So I know that I'm not alone in that. These are also really great to take on the go because they are magnetic. So you can just put them on like a cookie sheet and take them in the car with you and they don't go anywhere. All right, so those are her shelves right now. She has some baskets up in her room, in her closet from which I rotate the different materials that she has available. When I film her updated bedroom tour pretty soon, I will be sure to show you guys what those look like. So right next to her shelves is her bookcase. It is a front facing bookcase, which is ideal for toddlers because they can see the covers of the books and they can easily select the book that they want themselves because it's not very tall. A lot of you guys have asked me about this bookcase and it's not something that I purchased. My husband actually built this for my daughter for her first birthday, but I'm currently working on a blog post, which when it is finished, I will be sure to link below for you guys that has the plans and the materials that my husband used to make this bookcase. So if there's someone that you know that's really good with woodworking, or maybe you yourself are really good with woodworking, that you could be able to replicate this bookcase if you wanted it in your own playroom. Between the ages of zero and six, children have a very tough time distinguishing between reality and fantasy. So the books that I try to select for her for the most part are all based in reality. So you've got things with actual real pictures in it of things that she recognizes from around the house and in her own life. And even the ones that are cartoonish, like this one for example, all of the pages are still telling a story that's based on things that really happen. So there aren't talking animals and things that don't really exist in real life. Now with that said, in our house we do keep fictional books with things like talking animals and we do have them on our bookshelves from time to time. My daughter really enjoys those. We just make sure that we talk about the things that are in the book. So for example, I know a lot of people are really big fans of Dr. Seuss. So if you were reading the One Fish, Two Fish book with your child, you might talk about what's in the book after you read it or as you're reading it and say, do fish really talk? And kind of have that conversation with your child so that they understand that it's not real. I also try to choose books for my daughter's bookshelf that are seasonal and tomorrow is our library day. So we're gonna be going to the library to pick out a bunch of books that I've already placed on hold related to spring because right now it is spring here in Colorado and she's seeing flowers and birds and bird nests and and green grass and things like that. So we're gonna be checking out some books to add to her bookshelf that have to do with those things. Next to her bookshelf, I keep just some of her gross motor things, I guess. I don't know what else to call them. She's got a little wagon here that we got from Ikea for her to kind of move things around and practice transporting if that's what she's into. In addition to her stroller, which she actually doesn't just use for babies, she also takes it outside and collects things for nature in it. This is a slide that she's had since her first birthday and she loves climbing on it and sliding down it and now she likes climbing up it backwards as well it's really great for a gross motor practice especially on days when we're kind of housebound if it's snowing outside she can still get up and climb and do all the things that toddlers like to do and last but not least we have her little art area behind me as you can see she has a child-sized table that she is able to sit down at by herself without any assistance this is the IKEA children's table if anyone is interested my husband did modify one of these chairs with some arms because she's been using it since she was not even a year old and this was great for her when she was much younger. Now that she's a toddler, she can get in and out of both chairs with relative ease and she doesn't really need the arms on it. But we are keeping it like that because we have a baby that will be using that chair in just a couple of months. Again, there's more artwork hung at her eye level here. She loves to chat with me when we have snacks at this table sometimes as well about what all the different little fruits and vegetables are that are on this very beautiful picture. I know somebody asked me about this picture once before in the past and I believe I just found it 
on Google image search. So if I can find it again, I will link it below for you guys. Right next to her table is what we call her art cart. We use this to store all of her art materials and the different types of materials that are in there are continually evolving as she's getting better and better at using different types of art materials. So on the top is kind of where I keep all the things that stay out all the time. She has a little basket of these solid temper paint sticks that one of my friends actually introduced to me. It is paint, but it works kind of like a glue stick, which is pretty cool. She loves playing with these. They are very vibrantly colored and they're really, really easy to use for toddlers because they are chunky. She also has chunky jumbo crayons, a little jar of colored pencils, a mug of markers, a little jar that has two chunky sidewalk chalk colors in it, and a little tiny wooden eraser that goes with her little chalkboard that I'll show you guys in just a minute. And as for painting supplies, I provide her with this little simple watercolor palette set that I got at the store, a couple of paint brushes, and a little small mason jar that we fill up with water for the watercolors. And then I usually give her this little sponge that's her size for cleaning up any messes on the table. She's also very fascinated with tape right now and taping things. So I have just a roll of tape that I'm able to cut off little pieces for her when she asks for tape. And then she also loves stickers. So I have a couple of different sticker books here, some of which were gifted to her, some of which I purchased, but she has all different kinds of stickers and she usually puts them in this little notebook that she got for Easter. On the second level of her cart, this is where I'm starting to keep some of the activities that I'm rotating for her. So these are not always the same. Right now, I recently have put out for her a cutting activity. So this is just a repurposed lunch container from my kitchen. I took one of the little separator compartments and used it for the different things that are in here. So I bought her a pair of preschool scissors that are spring loaded because she is just learning how to use scissors for the first time. I have a bunch of little pre-cut strips of construction paper in here and she just works on cutting little pieces off the strips. As you can see, she has been busy at work doing this over the last couple of days. This is one of her favorite activities right now. Next to her cutting activity right now, I have a Play-Doh activity set up for her. I don't exactly have the right size tray for this, so we're kind of making do with what we have. Again, I just repurposed a lunch container that we had in our kitchen, but I do have one color of Play-Doh, a bunch of little cookie cutters, a little wooden dowel like that you can use to poke and roll, and things like that. There's a little plastic Play-Doh knife that's made by the company Green Toys. It came with this little set that she got, and obviously a rolling pin to make it flat. On the bottom shelf right here, I have a little tray with some of the materials that go along with one of these magic water mat things that you've probably seen all over Amazon. This was gifted to her. The idea is basically that you take these little pens that are filled with water and if you write on the mat, it turns different colors. So it's kind of like painting in a sense, except just with water. Usually these sets come with a bunch of these little foam shapes and a bunch of stencils and a bunch more pens than she actually needs. So what I've done here is I've just taken out a couple of the shapes and only one of the stencils and one of each of the different kinds of pens that came with it. I also provide her with a little rag that she can use to wipe up any excess water that gets somewhere else other than the mat. And at the very bottom of her cart, this is where I keep her little chalkboard as well as some of her artwork that she's working on. But I'm actually working on finding some little in office trays to hang right here so that she can put the artwork that she's working on in it. And a little pad of some blank paper for her so that if she wants to start a new project, she can. Now, as I said, the activities that are available to her on these two shelves are in rotation. So there won't always be a cutting activity here. We just introduced this, but I'm planning to put it away in a few weeks when she seems like she's losing interest and replace it with a gluing activity because that's something that she has not done yet either. This tray won't always be Play-Doh. I'm planning to trade it out with other sensory art materials. So maybe perhaps one day this will be kinetic sand or it might be air dry clay. I always wanna have something available to her that involves molding and creating, but it's just not always gonna be Play-Doh. And the same goes for this bottom shelf here. As we get new art activities, we can kind of trade out what's down here and replace it with new things. And although this isn't exactly part of her playroom, I did wanna mention it in case anybody asks. We do keep a small potty available at all times to her right here next to the area that she plays in. We did start potty training her when she was 17 months old. Right now she is, like I said, just over two years old. So she is fully potty trained at this point with the exception of nighttime and naps. As you guys know, toddlers are very busy little creatures and sometimes they get so engrossed in what they're 
they're playing with that they forget to go to the bathroom. So it's kind of nice to have the potty here as a visual cue, just to remind her if she has to go to stop what she's doing, get up and use the restroom. She does know how to get up on the adult size potty as well, but she's not very good at it yet. And I think she still prefers the small potty. So we do plan on leaving it out here for a couple more months until she's ready to use the adult size toilet all the time. So that's what's in my toddler's Montessori playroom. I will definitely be sure to put links below for you guys for any of the activities that are on the shelves and especially this book, The Montessori Toddler, which is incredibly helpful. If you have any questions at all about something you've seen in this video today, then please feel free to leave a comment below and I'd love to chat with you about it. And if you have any ideas for some great Montessori activities that your toddler loves, I would definitely love to hear about them. So leave your ideas in the comments below. In case you're new to my channel, this video is actually part of a larger series called Montessori at Home. It's a series of videos that aims to provide practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori at home with your children. So if that's something that you're interested in learning more about, definitely go check out the playlist. I will also link it below for you guys. And if you want to see more of these types of videos in the future, then you might consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that bell so that you can get notifications every single time I post a new video. Other than that, thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you next time. Bye.